I go with Sam. That there's no stooges, no confederates. Even though us magicians, even David Copper, use them. But he doesn't use them all the time. But I'm just thankful that he used to learn all these big stage illusions and close up and parlor. I was trying to do is to learn all the Doug Henning and Copperfield illusions and he answered my prayers fourfold. Friends around my neighborhood, come out of the woodworks, hand me a library book, some big stage illusions and a guy named David on a bike. So I was I was cleaning my room up, Bill. I thought you'd you'd want this. Bill, why you look like you're seeing a ghost? I just, last night I just saw uh, the Great Wall of China on CBS and Copper suggested the uh, the history of Mad by Milburn Christopher and the Emerson Magician Handbook by Henry Hay. These and many more books are help you help you read more. Library, Library of Congress and book public books are to help you read more about it. Uh, I was trying to just be able to get that amateur magician handbook by Henry Hay. And he said, well, he, he just answered your prayers. Here you go. See, if you pray to Jesus, he'll answer your prayers. I've come a long way, and now that Wayne Berry coined me on the Internet, a walking magic book full of knowledge and I share it freely from videos to one-on-one -on -one. in other words I'll make a video of me talking about how illusions are done Now, stuff like Paul Gertner's and all that stuff, I'll watch that and I'll see people actually reveal it with their own video, not Paul Gertner's video. If they use Paul Gertner's video and not them explain it, then they be, usually they, they get in trouble. But I've actually seen them go on YouTube and perform a Paul Gertner routine and then they'll reveal it but yet they're still on YouTube I don't get the concept Paul Gertner doesn't like his stuff being revealed whereas um Stephen Brundage said you know it's a ruse to everybody I guess everybody's revealing his routines and different routines similar to his but he doesn't mind. Stephen Browning is a down the earth kind of guy. Even David Copperfield and Lance Burton and Melinda and all them and Franz Roy, they're slowly letting people understand his illusions. They're actually giving hints. And Penn and Teller, they reveal every secret in the book. And as Copperfield coins them, there's a Beavis and Buddy of magic. But even Copperfield in year 23 has come out with his own history book of how magic tricks are done. Even Bob Scopo said the internet is the new library because parents can't take their kids to the library anymore and libraries are, are slowly fading out. The internet is the new library. Even DVDs are going into the $5 or $8 or $9 bin. They're slowly fading out. And everything is going digital. The money that you're holding your hand are going digital. Everything is digital now. It's going to be a cashless society. That means God's right around the corner, closer than you think. Tom Perl's message a long time ago before COVID. Um, the end time message. Tom Perl is now in heaven at peace. 
to teenagers and youth director Mark Taylor and assistant pastor Rusty Dillark coined Tom Farrell Double Barrel Farrell. And Pastor Asher said, You guys keep calling him that. I wonder why you call him. Then he had him come when he, he when Pastor Asher became old pastor. He had Tom Farrell preach. And he said, You know, now I know why you guys call him Double Barrel Farrell. He preaches fire and brimstone. And I'm thinking, Yep, so does Ron Comfort and Ron D. Gard. They all preach fire and brimstone they, as Mr. Story would say they keep you on they keep you on your toes okay but here's another pattern <clears throat> see this is a pattern this is the uh, slow motion solve Just imagine the cube 20 moves away, 5 moves away, 3, 2, 1. That's the imagination song. And I'm using a, a Ernest Rubik's Cube speed cube. I'm trying to make the one that comes with the video, the cube 3 thing, it's still in its case. I'm trying to keep that to last long. It's just a regular cube, it's no special cube. That's why I can use this cube and do the same thing. A Rubik's cube. Instance always where you go behind the back, catch it, or let a judge catch it, or like I do, go behind the back. And they go, Wow, how'd you do that? And a church member being comical, Robert Kelly said, Wow, Bill, you still got the, the magic power. Uh, yeah, magic power, you mean magic touch. Yeah, magic touch, yeah. Yeah, I still got the magic touch. The, um, even on America's Got Talent, they, they say that to the kids, Brian Petty. You, you clearly have magical powers, and then Brian Petty's probably thinking, well, it's an illusion. But he says that says to the dad, uh, yeah. My dad taught me, gave me the magic powers at two. He gave them to me. But what really Ryan Petty is saying, my dad taught me how to solve do magic tricks at age two. And the, the one lady judge, she says, you are a regular Harry Potter. In a way, she can honestly say that because. On Now You See Me 2, um, Radcliffe does magic tricks on there, and even in between the Harry Potter movies, he got a real magician to teach him sleight of hand, close-up magic tricks. Doogie Howser, MD, he, he got hooked on magic by watching David Blaine. And now he does stage illusions too. Donnie Osmond, the great Osmondo's illusionist in the Genie magazines, with his sister Marie, he does magic tricks too. A lot of people don't know he does magic tricks, but I do, thanks to Bob Spookfield. Let me see all his 
Bob Scoopler had tons of genie magazines and uh, some magic magazines. And right on the front cover, not only Doug Henning and others, and Copperfield and all that, and Andre Cole, but it had Donny Osmond and Marie Osmond right on the front cover. Donny Osmond, the great of the Mondos. And I let Donny Osmond know on, his, on Facebook and YouTube, and he, he was like, well, he said, Bill, if I can't see you in person, I'd like to shake your hand in heaven. I even got the Donny Osmond school note, notebook. It had Donny Osmond's face on it. And the, the teen guys, when I was at Harry Hunt, Hunt for Harry, they said, oh, he's got Donny Osmond uh, for a notebook and all that. And we got, we got girls on ours because we like girls. I said, well, it's good you like girls. I'm not doing what you're thinking. I'm straight. I'm a Christian. Donny Osmond, he's a singer, and he does illusion. He's the great Osmondos. And they didn't say anything after that. Because they know that I like to do illusions. And they understood, okay, he does magic. Okay, that makes sense, okay. It's just like, for example, they come in with their Reeboks and all these fancy shoes back then that are worth 90, 100 some dollars. My parents only could afford regular tennis shoes and they call them pit, they say, oh, Bill is wearing fish heads. I said, well, I'm just thankful that my parents can afford shoes on my feet. And they didn't say anything after that. color change, like you do a color change in a deck of cards, change a card to another card, by a wave of the hand, well, it's similar here, and then show the whole thing solved. Stephen Bunny said do it this way, had, had a little flourish, like when you do a deck of cards, a flourish. And a lot of panaz. He didn't say panaz, but I thought of that idea with David Copperwood. Statue of Liberty special with Eugene Levy. There's a lot of things you do. See, everybody's like I was telling Eon Seamsters that in the, in the foyer while he was waiting for his dad to pull up in, in the truck. He got, I said, most people start out by the cross, and then they get to corners, then the middles, then the bottom corners, then the bottom middles. Some do. They do the cross, and then they could do the middle, and then they do the bottom corner and all that. But I said some do the cross, they get the middle done, and then they get the bottom done. That's what I told them. They get the bottom corner done, rather, and they get that done, the bottom middle, and then they work with. They got the two done on the sides, and then they just work with the center, like that. That's the, uh, in other words, I didn't get to tell them, but that's the I'll do solution. But I said, my version, and another guy the same way, I start with the corners, then I look, work with the here, then I work with the middles, 
then the bottom corners, and then the bottom middles. <clears throat> but about that time, he said, well, my dad's here. Gotta go. I said, oh, yeah. And it was raining, and I said, you know, with a strobe light, you can make the rain look like it's slowing down. And he said, oh, I've seen that before. Oh, you have? And he said, and he got in the, in the truck with it with his dad doing the driving. Okay, um, his dad Clay is cool. He's a really nice guy. Ian's nice too. His mom is too. They're all nice people. Everybody at church is real nice and friendly. Even Jeff Hoyt says, you know, I ain't come back in a long time and I come to visit. It's like I never left. Good news where everybody is somebody. <coughs> Since 1972, 50 years of good news. Anyway, I'm just going to mix this up. It doesn't matter what color you pick. It's up to you what color you want to pick. I mean, if you had a purple Ruby's Cube, if you had one side all purple, then you would use, you could pick the purple side. Or if one side was black, or one side was neon color, or if it was checkered and the others were solid, you could use the checkered side. Well, you get to say, not all cubes are made the same. The humans are all made different. We all, God makes us have different fingerprints. Even twins or lookalikes, they don't have the same fingerprints. God makes sure we're not all robots. We have different fingerprints. God makes us uniquely divine. Make it, and we're made in his own image. Anyway. I'll just pick red, for example, as the top. i just see, okay, this goes to its center. It's the red to the, I'll try, I'll solve it, I'll try, I'm not teaching it yet. Okay. I'm forced to have it, trying to teach. I, I'll teach it later. Let's see. Try to get all the pieces in as quick as possible. No, that's not the right color that goes. Where does that go? Red, red. There it is. Not the right red. I mean, it's the red, but not in the right area. Okay, I gotta focus here. Maybe it's this. Yeah. Now, try to. Okay, not on well yeah, there is one on the bottom. Okay, that goes over here. You see the difference once I get the middle once I get the top done. Because the top is what slows me down for some reason. If I could figure a way to get the top quicker. Okay, red, red, where is that red? Oh, it's in the middle. I think the best bet is look at the middle first before I look at the bottom. Because sometimes, more than not, it's in the middle or on top and all that. So I got the top, got a color line like a T. Mr. T, da, 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 the 18 and all that. Rubik's Cube on train, Rubik's Amazing Cube. Hello, my name is Rubik. It's good to find out that um, horse, the actor who plays Horseshack on 
Welcome back, Carter did the voice of Ruby's Cube cartoon. They just sped up his voice. I thought that was cool. It's like that one guy did all the chipmunks by speeding up the record. Okay, I'm looking for the blue. Oh, there's a blue. A blue white. A blue white. There it is. blue yellow. Make sure it's not in the middle first because sometimes while you're looking at the bottom what you're looking for is in the middle and it's just not in the right area. Blue yellow there. I'm just going to do it fast. Just show the difference between the top. Okay. How quick I got the middle real quick. And that's right. That's not right. Oh, perfect. These two guys switch. So it's uh, once, twice. Then I look for patterns. And that goes here. that pattern. See, it's important to learn patterns because cuts are solving time. That guy was real honest uh, on the guy on YouTube who does speed queuing. He let the judges know that they kept giving him the same mix all the time and it a quick song. Honesty is the best policy. That's the Christian way to do do it. Anyway, you can see that I can solve the middle and the bottom real quick. It's the top that slows me down. I have to find a way to get the top quicker. Because if I could go fast on the top, like how I do the middles and then the bottom, I could really probably break my original record of 1 minute and 12 seconds. When I first started out, I could get it down to 5 minutes or something, or 5 minutes and something. That was about, but then I got it down to a minute and 12. But, now, now, now people can solve it in 15 seconds or 14 seconds or 5 seconds, and I think three seconds, I don't know. They know some secret maneuvers I don't know. No. I can give it an illusion that I can solve it real quick by doing Stephen Bundy's sleight of hand. And that church, they go, wow, he solved that with one hand. And I gotta be honest with it, these are trick shots. Trick trick shots or trick solves, either way I say it. But I mainly try to say trick solves. But if, yeah, if I solve it, solve it, my best time is a minute and 12. That was in 1980s. I don't know. I've never been timed since then. Anyway. But See, I, I, maybe because they do the, this first before this. The main thing is, try to get the top and get a color line to their centers. The centers do move. If you get a picture cube, even while you're mixing it, the center will go your clockwise or counterclockwise and all that stuff. But you don't know that it moves because you got solid colors all around so everything looks the same. But when you get a, a picture cube where there's different pictures on it, you, even though you solve it the way you normally would solve it, the center's got to be clockwise or counterclockwise. And you have to do some other pattern compared to the Rubik's pattern to without messing it up to get the centers to match up 
exactly with the pincer in the right area. So the centers do move, but it's stationary like a clock. Clockwise or counterclockwise and all that stuff. That's something that if you ain't noticed, I noticed. I'm sure you know if you got a picture cube. <clears throat> I got the Rubik's Magic Link too, but I haven't mastered it yet. Need to practice it. My family always buy me puzzles. Although this year they got me uh, uh, a jacket. That's cool. I needed a new jacket. My nephew William and his wife Janelle bought, bought me a nice thick red jacket. That's going to come in handy in the fellowship hall. Cause they got that AC on and boy is it chilly in Sunday school. God is in control of everything. Including what he puts in the White House. It's God's timetable. As Pastor Walcott's message and Pastor Mike Asher's message is a similar message. But Mike Asher added, all material resources goes back to God. Let's see, um, we plan to expand the church, that'll be cool. To six, to see 600 people. But you never know, we might have even more people, you never know. And we started out with three buses, and then we plan to have at least 20 more buses. 20 buses this time around. That's more than three buses. We'll have 20 buses. That means we'll need not just three drivers, we'll need 20, 20, 20 bus drivers to pick up the children and feed them and give them the word of God. And then the parents will start coming. That's, that's how we all came to church. Started out with the bus. Du, du, du. I was just, once I got saved at Alexander Baptist Church at a vacation Bible school, Minerva the, the babysitter, babysitted us. Um, her, her son was named, I think also named Bill, but her, he, youngest son was named Bear, but anyway, we, w we went to uh, Vacation Bible School, and he never took us there, and, and I heard the word of God, I'm pretty much sure it was Tom Farrell, because he talked about, the, the way Tom Farrell would say it about, that God you would didn't recognize Jesus after they whipped him with a cat of nine and I tell you look like raw hamburger meat. Anyway, the lady said, Do you want to get saved? And I said, Yeah. So I asked Jesus in my heart. I asked Jesus to forgive me all my sins and come out and save me. And then they even gave me a Bible. And I came home and said to my mom, I got saved and she said, That's good. And then I was praying to Jesus that he helped me find a good uh, church to go to. And that following Saturday, there was a knock on the front door. A lady said, hey, would you like to come to church? Hold on, I gotta ask my dad. My dad, Bud. So I asked my dad, and she said, your sisters? Yeah, if your sisters can go. And then I came back, yeah, I can come to church as long as my sister, Sean Stacy, can go. And she said, sure, the more the merrier. And she said, I'm, I'm Annette Williams, just be ready. For, look for a, bu a band. Well, later on it was a bus. Look for a bus that says Good News on it, Good News Baptist. Be ready early in the morning, Sunday. I said, okay. <laughs> so me and my sisters went. And at first, Sean and Stacy weren't too happy about it. 
but then later on they actually enjoyed it. And then later on my mom went on the bus. And then um, other church members that became full-time church members at our church that started on the bus. Eric and my mother drove the bus, sometimes Bob Schofield, and Flo Stall would do the Christian songs to the kids, and I did magic tricks, and Rusty Diller did magic tricks, and if you sit up straight, you get them, whoever who was sitting up straight, and I would get uh, something in the magic treasure chest, sometimes it would be a Bible, Holy King James Bible, or it might be some candy and stuff. And he had a hat that had like a rabbit in it. And Bob Schofield would sing, Let's go on a bear hunt. Can't go through it. Gotta go around it. Shh, shh, shh. And if he was driving, and when we would sing the song, If you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. If you're saved and you know it, toot your horn. We go toot, toot. And then Bob would take the horn and the bus and go, toot, toot. Those were some days in the 1980s. That was some fun stuff. But now we're bringing back a time machine. We're bringing back not only three buses, but we'll have 20 buses. And the fellowship hall will have a new fellowship hall, but it's going to have a gymnasium. I thought that's going to be cool. And expand the church to 600 people and of course we'll probably have more than that and expand the parking lot God's in control of everything we now got a digital sign we got a 12-seater golf cart to take people on a training to get closer to the area that's walking with a cane or a walker or can't get around good also the security guards can use it so they can don't have to walk around. They can get to their destination quicker. Okay. Jesus is in Christ, Lord, ever God, all capital, is in, is in control of everything, including who he puts in the White House. Some people have took in the instant soul and went this direction. I wonder if it's because they might have been left-handed. They, they're probably left-handed, so they do it left-handed. See, I'm right-handed, so I'm doing exactly what to a brother like that, and then solve it the right-handed way, where they do the same idea, but they do it left-handed. But the thing is, is that the, the pattern that you do, the instant solve, the way Sun Brother teaches it, they do it the opposite direction to come out with the same outcome. Not, not even the, the instant solve in the bag. And even Steam Brother says, you can come up with your own patterns. He'd like to see them. I did it wrong, I did it wrong. I know I did it wrong because it doesn't look right. No, no, that's not right. Maybe it's this way. But then that's right there. Oh well, I find out. No, that can't be right. Somewhere I made a wrong turn in Albuquerque. I'm just going ahead and solve it, solve it, because I know it's not going to come out right. I'm sitting there talking, not paying attention to what I'm doing. I 
Oh, you know why? I know why. I'm doing two patterns, thinking that I did the other pattern. But now I know it's the other pattern. That's what's messing me up sometimes. I, I'm doing two patterns and forget that it's the other pattern. Yeah, that's probably what the problem is. Oh well. <laughs> I'll just, like I said, I'll just solve it, solve it. I'll pick yellow at the top. I'm going to try it their way. I'm going to try to do the flower thing first, the cross first before I do the corners and see if it's any quicker. This I learned by doing the corners first. And I think it's because I just wanted to. Because probably the book says to do the same thing. Every book probably says the iodo solution and the simple solution and the mastery. They all probably say start in the middle. But I just decided to be outside the box and do the corners. But I see on YouTube there's another guy who did the same thing. And it turns out he's on, been on, he's been on, uh, that's incredible on ABC where they mix the cube up and try to solve it the fastest. So, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter what you start with, you just gotta learn to go fast. But anyway, I'll try to do what everybody else does across first. Okay. They say there's a cross inside of our body that represents Jesus. If that's true, okay. when God created us, he made sure that we know who who created him, created him and that represent he was going to go on a cross to shed his blood on, for all mankind so that mankind can receive a free gift they just have to accept it he doesn't force it he wants he wants people to do it on their own and if they don't they had their chance and they, their name will be out of the book of life and they'll be cast into the lake of fire he wants all to be saved, though. He doesn't want nobody to perish. That's why he talks about that more than heaven, because he doesn't want nobody to go there. It was only meant for Lucifer and the fallen angels. But if you don't get saved, then you end up going there too. Where the worm dieth not, and you burn forever and ever in pain and torture. And every bad craving, smoking, drug, whatever, you'll crave it but not get it. Read the true story about the rich man, and you'll understand that concept. Uh, he was in torment, needed water, but he didn't get it. But he wanted his brothers to get saved. But they said they're going to have to do it on their own. See, God don't make robots. It's your choice. You either make the right choice or the wrong choice. It would be best to make the right choice. Okay. All right. Now, if I, I'm so used to doing the corners. I gotta say, see, that's right. Now I gotta find the yellow green. Yellow green. Where's the yellow green? Oh, there it is. Now the yellow red. Yellow orange. Okay, yellow orange. I just gotta find the yellow red. Where's the yellow red? There it is. Oh, 
Okay, I got that done. Then they say to do the corner. See, yellow and... And then the yellow, yellow or orange. Or whatever cross that you do, whatever. Whatever pack color as yours is on the cube. Oops, put it the wrong way. Okay. See, it's there, but it's not in the right order. I can do it either way, but I think I'll just do it this way. See, once you know how to do things, you can find court shortcut. This goes here, and it's going to match up. Okay. Oh, I... Well, how did I... Did I get to yellow-orange? Because I know I saw it at the cross. How did I come out with... Now it's over here. Whoops. I don't know how I did that trick. Good thing I got it recorded. Somehow that came out of... Out of a, out of a pattern or something. Anyway. I guess that's part of the thing. Like how the solution does. And then they do the middle. Which I know how to do. Birthday that way, because dino dinners are twice once. Okay, then you look for patterns and do this all the time until you come across this pattern here. I don't know if I came across it in a, in a book or I figured out on my own to do this and then this part got done. I can't remember, but I just know that it was quicker. Instead of waiting to get to that second one. Okay, because James A. North said you'll find ways to cut so many times. And I am, the way I do the middles, the way you, that's my pattern. If you just help me find a shortcut. Okay, look for either one done or in there but not color line. That's this one. And that's not in white mag map yet. No, okay. Okay, now, this one I know came from the I'll Do a Solution, the one that's all color at the Toys R Us store. But that place is closed up in Chesapeake now. It's like a ghost town. It might be called, it's probably changed into something else. Anyway, one, one. Oh man, I was in there saying one, and it, this would have been solved, folks. I meant to say one, once, twice, and and messed. I messed up. Because it would have been solved, trust me. This cube would have been solved. But no problem. I'll just... I might end up putting it where I... Either it'll solve, get solved, or... Be back to that pattern to try it again. I'll find out. But just to prove a point, I do. You do the pattern to get to the pattern. Once, 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 twice, once, 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 twice. See, that was the pattern that I had. See, the top's done. Got a color line, and the corners are done. The bits are pretty too. So you turn it upside down, just out of the sort, and these two gotta get done. 
That's where I go. Once, 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 twice. Go back once, go back once, go back twice. Because the outer solution is to get the top done, and then the bottom done, and hold it left and right, and work with the middles. And that's one of the middle patterns I remember. So I'm using a little bit of outer solution, simple solution, and by James E. Norris, and my version of getting in the middle done. And the rest is from the simple solution by James E. Norris. Like I said, my dad, I learned him to get this done. Could have taught me like that, and my sister was following along with it. And then we'd, I taught him the middles. But when I started doing the bottom, is when you got to memorize patterns. And that's when my dad, Marcel, Frank Page Jr., said, Bill, you lost me. And Cheryl got lost too. So they only learned how to do this much of it the top and the middle. The bottom they never learned, but later on Larry Maples taught Cheryl how to solve the whole thing. And <clears throat> I said to Larry Maples, I used to know in an, how to do the Rubik's Revenge. I came across to playing around like the Rubik's Cube, but I I did something like I did the middles but add a little twist. And he said, I wish you could try to remember it, Bill. Try to remember it, Bill. I, I got the impression he's got the Rubik's Revenge and he wants to learn how to solve it. I never did get to teach him, but he could go on YouTube and learn it. I came across a guy who started my memory because I think that's the same pattern he's using. But the problem is, see, the centers don't move and move except maybe like this, but you won't know because the collar are solid. But whatever.